Once again, we extend a heartfelt greeting to all our esteemed guests joining us from various corners of the globe for yet another thrilling seminar. It's our great pleasure to welcome all of you to the 11th seminar in the third edition of the seminar series on the digital future for business and society emerging perspective on the metaverse. I, Dr. Vinod Kumar from Symbiosis Institute of Business Management, Pune and Dr. Annabel Kittiges from University of London are truly honored and privileged to lead this exciting event as moderators. This event, uh, this seminar series is hosted jointly by Professor Yogesh Kumar Devedi, who is Professor of Digital Marketing and Innovations and Founding Director of the Digital Future for Sustainable Business and Society Research Group at School of Management, Swansea University, Wales, UK. Next, we have Dr. Laurie Hughes. He is Senior Lecturer within Strategic Operation Group and founding member of the Digital Future for Sustainable Business and Society Research Group at School of Management, Swansea University, Wales, UK. And we have Professor Ramakrishnan Raman. He is currently Director, Symbiosis Institute of Business Management, Pune, Dean, Faculty of Management, Symbiosis International Dean University, Director, Strategy and Development, Symbiosis. Our entire seminar series is jointly supported by Digital Marketing and Analytics, SIG, Academy of Marketing, Green Nobel IAE Graduate School of Management, a Green Nobel INP School of the University of Green Nobel Alps, the e business and e government SIG British Academy of Management, the UK Academy for Information System UK AIS. Now, I'd like to share very briefly about the seminar series. The seminar series on digital future for business and society, Emerging Perspective on the Metaverse, will present various perspectives from a number of leading expert speakers to highlight the opportunities and challenges posed by the rapid emergence of the metaverse. The seminar series will not only offer a timely and thought-provoking insight into the metaverse, but also its impact on the future of business, management, and societal factors impacted by growth, direction, and widespread adoption of this new immersive technology. Today, we are incredibly fortunate to have the esteemed presence of Professor Jo Ju Yong Kim, an eminent researcher who will grace the event with his insights on the topic Metaverse and Advertising, a Symbiotic Relationship. To tell you something about our speaker of the day, Professor Kim is a PhD from University of Florida and is a professor of advertising, Dan McGill, Georgia Athletic Association Professor and Director of the James M. Cox Jr. Center for International Mass Communication and Training Research at University of Georgia, USA. Professor Kim's research seeks to advance scientific knowledge on understanding the interactions between advertising and consumers across various media platforms. His current research interests include metaverse advertising and advertising via blockchain technology. A very warm welcome to you, Professor Kim. So without any further ado, I would kindly request you to take over and address our esteemed audience. Over to you, Professor Ken. Great. <clears throat> Thank you so much for the uh, introduction. Uh, and uh, it's, 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 a, it's an honor for me you know, to uh, be with you all. And uh, uh, this is really great opportunity for us to think about the current and future of uh, this exciting uh, platform and universe, uh, which is called the metaverse. So, uh, you know, and I, I see a lot of people joining in this webinar and uh, uh, I can really sense uh, the excitement uh, and uh, interest in uh, this uh, exciting field. So I'm so honored to be here to present uh, my thoughts and uh, some theories that I'm thinking about uh, to develop uh, in this domain. So uh, without uh, yeah, further ado, as Dr. Vinod Kumar said, you know, yeah, I want to really present uh, what I have here today. So today's presentation uh, will be about 45 minutes of presentation, and uh, it's going to be followed by about 10 minutes, maybe about 15 minutes of Q&A. So if you have any questions or comments, uh, we can share and we can discuss. Once again, thank you so much uh, for uh, inviting me. And uh, uh, here is uh, my uh, profile page from uh, my university. Uh, my name is Chu Young Kim, and uh, uh, I'm the director of uh, Cox Center 
for mass communication training and research. And uh, also I do some research in sports communications as well. And uh, uh, as you can see uh, in my profile, uh, which is also introduced by uh, Dr. Vinod Kumar, um, my re research is mainly in advertising, but in relation to uh, the interactive settings and context. So Metaverse actually was, uh, you know, fascinating to me when it first uh, came to uh, the research community. Uh, I think, you know, the technology research community might have already known about, uh, also heard about uh, Metaverse, but for the social scientists such as me, uh, it was uh, pretty recent, you know, which was in 2021, you know, uh, before uh, Mark Zuckerberg actually introduced uh, his company's name to be changed to Meta. So since then, you know, I really gave uh, uh, my attention to the Metaverse and uh, how uh, I wanted to see how uh, my research domain, which is advertising, uh, can be really uh, uh, useful and it, it can also help the metaverse in the future. So this is me. So uh, if you have any questions uh, after the seminar, uh, feel free to contact me so I, we can follow uh, the discussion. So before we uh, begin, I want to, uh, you know, and there's no time for everybody to uh, introduce who you are, but uh, I just want to ask uh, Dr. Uh, Vinod Kumar that uh, who uh, the participants are in general today. Uh, I know basic sense uh, from <laughs> Dr. Yugesh, uh, but you know, yeah, can you kind of tell me who we are? Yeah, mostly they're from uh, academia and industry both. And uh, uh, from many parts of the countries, many countries, they are global uh, audience today with us. And uh, uh, so they're looking forward to uh, the metaverse and relationship between advertising and uh, various facets related to advertising and uh, uh, from industry and academia perspective, from both the perspectives. Yeah, Professor Kim, there are about 30, 30 participants. Uh, majority of them are faculty members or mm -hmm. uh, those who are pursuing research. I would say about 22, 23 of them are from this group. The rest are all, uh, you know, mm. uh, students. Uh, that's, that's the group that we are now. I see. Okay. <clears throat> so I think, you know, because, because everybody here is uh, mainly research-oriented, uh, you know, faculty and students and from the industry. And I think, you know, we have the, uh, something in common which is that we are interested in uh, how media can help business and also how media can uh, help the society uh, to be a better and efficient and effective place. So, uh, you know, so it is, uh, you know, us, you know, gathering here today, you know, to talk about and hear about metaverse because it is, Sounds like important, you know, for us uh, moving forward in the future. So the, the metaverse is important uh, in, uh, you know, in a couple of ways. Uh, and, uh, you know, the first thing, of course, is the media. Uh, it, it is a media that uh, people and companies and the creators and the users of those contents uh, con created by the creators and also brands and companies will gather together in that space to interact. So uh, it is a media, but you know, what will happen on the, uh, in the metaverse is the communication. You know, there will be communication among uh, people and agents uh, and other avatars and the companies Etc. So there will be things in the metaverse that we can interact, which will involve communication. But the problem here is that it's a media environment that does not exist yet. So we know that you know we have evolved into using uh, the mobile devices, and we are you know uh, moving into the other area, the next era. Uh, you know, uh, into the metaverse. 
And uh, as you know, uh, Apple recently announced that uh, it's going to uh, launch the Vision Pro next year. And uh, it's going to be uh, about spatial computing. So the things are on our hand, hands, you know, from the newspaper era, radio, uh, TV, you know, computer and mobile. Things are around, you know, our body and hand. But, you know, moving forward, moving into the metaverse and spatial computing uh, era, I think that the computing experience and uh, uh, the experience with the other world is going to be more real and it's going to be surround us. So, uh, you know, there is uh, something that is coming to us uh, in the future. The problem is that the media environment is not here in a real form yet. So that is the uncertainty, you know, that uh, we have now. You know, uh, there is uncertainty about, you know, how the metaverse is going to look like, how the metaverse is going to feel like. However, there is also certainty, you know, which is that, you know, that the metaverse will come to us, and we will use it on a regular basis in the future. Uh, at some point today, today I'm going to talk about, um, you know, that there are. Uh, some people and you know there are many many actually people you know who think uh, also who doubt the uh, the future of metaverse you know metaverse is fake you know it doesn't happen you know it's if, even if it's, it does you know it's not going to be used by many people because it is so inefficient and it doesn't really feel like real but on the other hand uh, with uh, high uh, intensity computing you know uh, and fidelity increase the metaverse can become really real and it, it can be something that people can enjoy. So there is uncertainty about the future of metaverse and certainty of the future of metaverse, uh, you know, coexist uh, for now. Uh, we all know the origin. And uh, I think, you know, because everybody here is interested in somewhat uh, or really uh, interested in uh, the metaverse, I think, you know, many of you know uh, the origin of and the history of the metaverse. I'm gonna really quickly go through uh, uh, and uh, uh, so we can be on the same page. So the origin is from the Niels uh, <clears throat> Stephenson's novel, Snow Crash, uh, published in 1992. And, uh, uh, and that, so, so the metaverse concept was coined uh, in that year. And then the, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if anyone here uh, really know about this, uh, you know, uh, publication and also work in, uh, in 2007, the Metaverse Roadmap uh, was uh, actually uh, published in 2007, you know, by uh, many people from different industries and sectors and technology areas uh, who gathered uh, to co-imagine what the Metaverse will be like, and then they defined what it is actually at the time and which is still relevant to uh, how we see the metaverse uh, nowadays. So it was 2007. And then it was uh, visualized uh, in uh, the St Steven Spielberg's film, uh, Ready Player One uh, in 2018. So if anyone here uh, didn't see, didn't watch it, uh, I will encourage you to watch it. Uh, it's not necessarily really fun movie, but you know you can kind of sense uh, you know how the metaverse can be imagined you know uh, moving into the future. Uh, and you know the metaverse uh, has become the real thing uh, you know in 2021 when Facebook's uh, I mean, former Facebook uh, company's uh, CEO Mark Zuckerberg said you know he, I'm, I'm going to change our name our company's name to Meta. And NVIDIA also uh, jumped in, Microsoft jumped in, and there are other companies, main companies really jumped into the metaverse area uh, to develop, to uh, talk about, you know, uh, how it's, it should be you know, from their perspectives. So these steps, uh, metaverse uh, is actually the metaverse, the space is in an urban environment uh, and it is developed uh, along a single hundred meter wide road the street. Uh, there's an owner of the virtual real estate by this name, and there is access provider, uh, and uh, uh, you know, the, and the users can gain access to the metaverse through the personal terminals if you are wealthy enough, 
all low quality public terminals in booth. And they all wear something called, I mean, I don't know, they, they all wear the HMD devices. So, you know, they are, you know, called by people gargoyles, you know, uh, because it, they look like, you know, they, they, they wear the gar, uh, you know, goggles and, uh, uh, and they look like, you know, uh, uh, it's very special uh, kind of people. So the user experience at the time was first person perspective uh, uh, through avatars of any form. And uh, transportation within the metaverse was actually limited to uh, analogous of reality by foot or vehicle, such as the monorail. So uh, you know, it's uh, their height was limited. You know, uh, how fast they can uh, uh, run was also limited. So there are limitations and flexible, uh, you know, imaginations coexist in the in the metaverse. Uh, Neil Stephens uh, novel. So are we going to see the same? Uh, or are we going to ex uh, experience the same metaverse world as Neil uh, Stephen imagined? Maybe not. But you know the imagination that he had in his book was uh, pretty detailed enough, you know, for us to actually imagine how it could be. So, um, so I wanted to kind of share with you, uh, you know, how people, especially the first person Neil Stephen, imagined uh, what the metaverse would like. Uh, would, would be like. So a couple of days ago, <clears throat> uh, I typed metaverse and tried to see uh, what kind of news, uh, recent news, um, we can, uh, the Google can actually capture uh, and gather actually, you know, and show us. And as you can see, metaverse is still uh, a hot topic in the, in the industry and also, uh, you know, to me, academia. Uh, Forbes uh, is uh, saying that the metaverse is going to shape the future of the internet and the business through AI integration, which I'm going to uh, briefly talk about uh, later. Uh, China's industry ministry to work on standards for the metaverse. So metaverse is becoming, you know, uh, once again, it is uncertain how the metaverse is going to look like in the future. So whoever uh, uh, who can develop the standard technology and protocol to be used for the metaverse, such as HTTP, HTTPS, uh, you know, for the internet. So if somebody <clears throat> or country or company makes it and it becomes the standard, then that entity will be the leader, right, in the, in the metaverse area. So I think that China is trying to do that. And there are other, uh, you know, interesting uh, headlines that you can take a look at it to see, to sense, uh, you know, uh, metaverse is still uh, one of the hot topics uh, in the industry. Uh, and so, so uh, as academicians, uh, we need to kind of follow and try to be more upfront uh, to investigate what can be done in the academia. The problem, as we know, is the metaverse, uh, uh, you know, is currently in the recession in terms of many different ways. You know, uh, for the past two years, uh, you know, people talked about the metaverse, you know, really, um, uh, it, it's, a lot of people kind of thought, you know, uh, when they hear, oh, metaverse is gonna be really here <clears throat> pretty soon. So uh, when, the, uh, when the meta, you know, the Facebook, former Facebook company you know, announced the meta, and they share their vision, you know, uh, and poured billions of money, you know, uh, into the uh, the development of, of the metaverse of uh, by their definition. Now we kind of thought it's gonna really come to us really soon, but it didn't, and it took time, uh, and still it, it, we don't really see that in reality yet. And uh, uh, the money was spent enormously, and uh, you know people were hired for only for that. And after just like a year and two, you know, the, uh, the investors, uh, you know, kind of try to uh, abandon the concept and, you know, they don't be believe in, uh, you know, if that's gonna really happen in soon, uh, I mean, in the next five years, for example. So uh, metaverse, you know, metaverse, has become uh, probably uh, not the top priority in 
the company Meta. So it's kind of ironical, you know, that the Meta is, uh, you know, uh, Meta, the Facebook uh, Mark Zuckerberg changed his company's name to Meta, but you know, uh, he is now kind of shutting down and you know, um, uh, making the organ, uh, making the uh, Metaverse uh, planning group and uh, development group really shrink. Uh, but I was interested in waning the Epic Games VP was, uh, was telling us and the Meta therefore exited uh, projects at Facebook Reality Labs, the division behind its Metaverse push. So it became smaller and smaller. Therefore, there is uh, less investment in terms of money and people. So do we have future in the Metaverse? You know, and there is a big question surrounding the Metaverse. Because uh, I'm gonna just go to the next page. You know, uh, iPad uh, creator Tony Fidel uh, isn't buying the Metaverse hype. This was published last year, but you know, uh, Metaverse is wrong. Yes, there are incredible users, uh, you know, for AR, VR, and XR if they're focused on a certain task. But I cannot see your face to build trust and a real personal connection. There's no dancing in the virtual world when people don't even have bodies, etc. So basically the experience that you get in the metaverse feels like fake. You know, uh, you are there and you're connecting and interacting with others in the form of avatars in the world that is simulated, currently still in animated form. It doesn't feel like real. And, uh, you know, a lot of characters that we see in the metaverse, um, you know, are not in, to the taste of the others. So, you know, there are such uh, uh, difficulties and challenges the metaverse uh, as the, the big domain and they are really facing. So what is the metaverse anyway? You know, so we can really uh, sense whether it's gonna happen or it could, it might be just like a small digital experience feared uh, as some other uh, people who doubt the, uh, the future of metaverse uh, things. So uh, the definition, as I told you guys, uh, it was initially, uh, I mean, the, the metaverse uh, term was coined by uh, Neil Stephens, but in 2007, the metaverse roadmap was developed uh, by industry folks. And uh, it, as you can see, a cross industry public foresight project and the metaverse roadmap was uh, you know, made. Uh, as you can see, a lot of people uh, from technology, social, and even medical side, they all gather together to co-imagine what the metaverse really is. So it is fascinating to see, you know, there are people uh, you know, that long ago. So like I said, 2007 means what, you know, uh, like a, yeah, more than 15 years ago, you know, uh, people already, uh, there were multiple uh, people who really thought the metaverse would be something that's gonna come in the future. So this is what they said. What happens when video games meet web 2.0? Uh, when virtual worlds uh, meet geospatial maps of the planet, when simulations get real and life and business go virtual, when you use a virtual earth to navigate the physical earth and your avatar becomes your own agent, what happens is the metaverse. So this is what they said, what they thought the metaverse would be like. And it is exactly what current uh, industry is uh, you know, imagining what the metaverse is going to be. So uh, there are uh, some uncertainties, however, but they are critical, which means uh, you know, we don't know what exactly it is gonna look like, but we know there are certain elements and features that will come to us uh, they, uh, uh, and things that we are gonna see in the future will be based on these. So, there are uh, there is two axes as you can see you know uh, more intimate experience and more external experience in other words more intimate area and more external field you know, of experience and also there are uh, augmented experiences and more simulated experiences augment augmented as you guys can uh, as you guys know is augmented is like you have something 
uh, and it, augmentation is like a uh, you know the technology makes it more informational, you know, uh, uh, more useful with added information or added layers of uh, features. So that's the augmentation. Simulation is like basically you know a uh, uh, digital twin, right? You know, twins. So uh, if it is a space, then there is another same same looking space, uh, you know, in the digital space. So uh, you know. As you can see here, external and augmentation when they co are combined, you know, it's like it's like externally augmented. So what we know as augmented reality, you know, uh, can be there. Okay. So uh, you know, uh, Pokemon Go is usually you know an example for augmented reality. It is external, and it is also augmented, uh, you know, layer, you know, to the to the um, actual reality. On the other hand, there is more intimate personal side of augmentation, which will be, uh, you know, in the in the area of life logging, uh, which is uh, usually social media. You know, social media is one of the life logging activities that people are doing. It's more it more uh, personal, but you know, you add uh, additional layer, you know, to uh, make your life uh, personal. But you know, also at the same time, shareable with uh, friends who are also in your personal domain. Middle words is for the externally simulated. So it is externally simulated, just so like Google Maps, for example. You know, it, it, it looks, uh, or Google Earth. You know, it's just a lot of things that you can interact, uh, you know, in the real, uh, you know, in a world or a space that looks like a real, and it really, uh, is the um, the copy of actual world is middle words, and it can be also intimate simulation, right? So it, it will be you know for example when you wear the HMD device and go into a special space you know uh, with uh, you know uh, uh, Meta Quest or uh, other other devices, then that's your kind of personal world that you are gonna experience. So metaverse is gonna be. <clears throat> You know, combination of these four, uh, which is actually based on the combination of how it is augmented, simulated versus how it is external to intimate. So uh, this is uh, the setting, basic setting that we can uh, think of. Uh, and uh, you know, based on that, there are four different uh, you know scenarios that you know will be important for us uh, academicians, uh, you know, to look into uh, for your research. So interface and networks will be important for uh, the augment augmentation side. Uh, models and immersion, models, uh, avatars, uh, or models and immersion will be important for the simulation. Sensors, uh, you know, and everywhere will be important for the external uh, side. And the identity and interaction will be important for the intimate. So the combination of these scenarios can be also really important aspects that you, we can consider in studying and examining uh, the metaverse. So uh, in 2007, they said uh, the metaverse uh, may be not a space at all. It can be a junction, uh, uh, which is the convergence of virtually enhanced physical reality and physically persistent virtual space. So when the physical reality and virtual space meshes together and it, it, in whatever format it looks like, it can be simulated uh, external uh, reality, simulated personal reality, or it can be augmented external reality, augmented personal reality. When, they, when the physical and virtual space meshes together, it can be the metaverse. So it's, a, it's a more like a concept. So we have cloudy vision now, you know, uh, you know so what, because metaverse is not here yet in a clear form, we don't really know. So defining the metaverse is a paradoxical task. This is what I uh, uh, said in, uh, at the beginning of the paper that I uh, published with uh, Dr. Yogesh uh, Diwadi, um, you know, in uh, psychology marketing. So defining the metaverse needs to be done but it is paradoxical test because it is not yet here, right? So without seeing it, we are trying to define it. 
some say the metaverse is a concept. Okay, it's just a, it's just, it's a concept. It's not a real thing. It's, it's not a thing. But you know, there are people you know, saying it's a thing such as virtual space. It's a set of virtual spaces. So it, now it is becoming plural. It's an environment or it's a network uh, or it's a system and it's a framework for connections. So, I mean, they, they think uh, metaverse in, in different ways. So basically the concept or, or thing, that's kind of two different things, but environment, virtual spaces, uh, network uh, could be uh, similar. The system is much, much broader and the framework for connections could be on even broader. And finally, uh, you know, uh, this person bar uh, in 2021 said, uh, metaverse is the next state of the internet. So if you uh, have seen uh, the introductory video of Vision Pro uh, by Apple, uh, it is close to what this projection uh, is like. So it's uh, metaverse is the next state of the internet. And Vision Pro uh, is thinking the spatial computing is going to bring the internet to your space. So, uh, so I think that what uh, this person uh, predicted is pretty much closer to the Vision Pro, uh, which is slightly different uh, from Metaverse. But you know, we can talk about it in the Q and A. You know, if we have time. Okay. So, internet versus Metaverse. Uh, we know internet was discussed in the 1960s, we realized in the late 1990s, and it grew since uh, 2010 exponentially. As you can see, <clears throat> number of websites in the world uh, nowadays reached more than 2 billion. And as you can see, you know, um, internet was actually, you know, it, it began uh, uh, in the, in the mid-1990s. Uh, if you guys, uh, if any of anyone here remembers, uh, you know, uh, in a little personal side, you know, I was, uh, I, uh, uh, you know, I worked at a company in 1996, and uh, uh, you know, at the time, you know, the, one of the first things that I had to do was how to uh, check and write emails, you know, uh, and uh, the and one of few websites that we, uh, in a, tested, you know, and uh, uh, studied how to use internet, use the internet was yahoo.com. And now we have 2 billion, more than 2 billion of our websites here. As you can see, it really grew high. How, what about the metaverse? It was coined in 1992, and uh, there was a hype uh, in, uh, of the prototype discussions in recent years. And because of the economic downturn, you know, the, the additional investment into the metaverse is becoming less. So as I said, you know, it, it is now in the recession, um, you know, uh, time, but it might be like, uh, we are somewhere here, you know, in the metaverse, very early stage. And at some point, metaverse is going to be really the real thing, you know, that can come to us uh, in the future. It can be within 10 years, it can be within 20 years. I hope it can be sooner, but you know, metaverse cannot be made by just one company or you know, uh, one country. It's, uh, as, as we see the internet today, it, is, it requires the support uh, and also mass adoption, uh, you know, supported by the technology and lots of research and uh, financial resources. So, is the metaverse the next iteration of the internet? This this is uh, you know uh, published in I mean it's in the magazine uh, Forbes magazine. So that's something that uh, we can view met the metaverse. Uh, you know, uh, not it's gonna replace what we use the internet. What we use the internet uh, completely, but it can be really good companion. Uh, you know that can really bring us another layer of experience. So internet is, uh, I mean, I was trying to use the uh, Oxford University's general definition of internet and try to 
create the definition of metaverse uh, using the computer network to the network of virtual environments and left everything as it is. And it, it really looks like the definition of metaverse as well. So, you know, it, I think this is a safe way to imagine what the metaverse is not gonna look like, you know, but you know, there are other elements that the uh, metaverse is gonna provide us, which I'm gonna talk about. The symbiotic relationship means, uh, you know, uh, the entities interacting gain the mutual benefits. You know, one provides benefit to the other in response to the benefit getting from the, the other side. So the, the mutual benefits exist. In order for the metaverse to succeed and, uh, you know, flourish, in our, for our, as our media experience, advertising is critical and necessary. You know, it, many of you may know uh, more than 80%, close to, or maybe slightly over 85% of Google's revenue is from advertising. Meta's, uh, more than 90% of Meta's revenue is from advertising. Is Google media company? I mean, it runs media, right? You know, uh, it, 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 the YouTube is owned by uh, Google and Google as search engine and Google also does cloud business. All sorts of things are there to support their media business actually. And the advertising is uh, what it really drives. So media and advertising have, have uh, really symbiotic relationships uh, to me you know, uh, based on the attention economy, which is called attention economy. So, you know, here I brought a really basic <clears throat> economics, uh, you know, theory and graph, you know, supply and demand curve. And uh, uh, many of you know what this is. You, you may remember uh, learning this. Uh, if you're not in this, uh, if you're not economist, you know, at some point in your life, you know, you, you might have seen this. So, you know, we can actually apply this supply and demand concept to uh, the media uh, and attention, uh, which is related to actually advertising. So the media companies actually provide the space for the advertising to be placed. In return, they get the money from the advertising advertisers and advertisers because they need to uh, advertise uh, their product and brands, they need to find a space for them to place their ads. So there is a supply of the media space and demand uh, for the media space exists. So there can be this sort of like a supply and demand curve uh, for the media industry. And you know, the space itself can be also considered as the, um, uh, the, the uh, attention, uh, you know, the, you know it, it can be considered as the opportunity to see uh, the ad, you know? So, so uh, uh, the, you know, the supply and demand crossed at the, uh, you know, in the middle here. It can be, uh, excuse me, it can be the, uh, you know, the price uh, for the attention that the, uh, uh, the uh, the media companies can uh, want to charge at the same time the companies uh, wanting to advertise want to pay for so healthy ecosystem where the supply of the opportunities for user attention and the demand for user attention can help a media platform flourish so he here is the thing that I, I i thought okay i'm an advertising researcher and the metaverse is going to be a new media platform that is coming to us what can I do? What should I imagine about? And I thought, okay, advertising will be there and it's gonna be an important part to support uh, the, fun the, the, uh, the business of metaverse as well as the, the people's uh, enhanced experience in the metaverse. Uh, with persuasive intent uh, to induce some intended responses uh, from a defined audience. So, so it, it, I know, I'm, I'm not sure how many of you have really seen this sort of uh, definition before, 
it looks like you know uh, pretty long, but it has all the important necessary uh, elements in it. You know, it is mediated, and it is communication. So it is a mediated communication, and it needs to be activated by a sponsor, which is usually brand with persuasive intent to induce some intended responses. So it requires media, it, require, it, it requires uh, a sponsor uh, for the uh, message, and you know, there should be persuasive intent to uh, you know, those targets. So uh, so uh, the, uh, the advertising definition, and now we are gonna talk about the metaverse definition. So we, we wanna kind of see how they are merged, uh, how they can be related. This, uh, the metaverse definition, there are many, many definition of metaverse. Uh, there are simpler ones and longer ones, uh, more academic ones and more uh, layperson uh, uh, definitions, which are all important and important to understand to get a sense of what it is uh, the metaverse is holistically. But this, uh, my definition of metaverse is based on my editorial that I published in the Journal of Interactive Advertising in 2021. <clears throat> uh, the metaverse uh, I defined was this. It's an interoperated persistent network of shared virtual environments where people can interact synchronously through their avatars with other agents and objects. So we want to kind of see how the elements of the metaverse can be relevant to the definition of advertising. So as you can see, I, I want to just like uh, give you the connections. So it's an, it's an interoperated persistent network shared virtual environment. And that environment is usually mediated uh, you know, environment. And people will be there. So there will be audience and there will be interactions happening. So that's gonna be the responses uh, between the brands in the metaverse and the people there. And there will be other agents and objects can be the brand. So in the metaverse, there will be advertising because there will be people and brands interacting over there. So it is inevitable for advertising and marketing researchers to understand what the metaverse really is and what we need to really study there. Uh, the metaverse has seven core elements, uh, which is actually you know, in the definition of the metaverse. So it requires the virtual environment. Uh, it requires embodied actors and immersive media uh, characteristics and there should be concurrence, uh, concurrent experience. So what you experience now uh, on your computer or, or on your side of metaverse experience should be also experienced by the other person on the other computer side. So there should be concurrence and interaction should be there. Uh, and uh, it should be also interoperable, which means uh, interoperability can be between the metaverse and the real world, but as well as interoperability can also mean basic interoperability concept that we can uh, we are experiencing nowadays uh, can be, for example, uh, when you try to nowadays increasingly when you try to log in your bank, log in your some other sites. Uh, even for LinkedIn and other other you know social media sites, they kind of share the identity through Google, for example, or Facebook. So with your Google uh, ID, Gmail ID, basically uh, that you use for your computer, uh, can be used for accessing other uh, uh, websites. So that is so your identity is what interoperable, right across the. Uh, the website. So in the metaverse, it should happen the same way. And also continuity is that, you know, uh, it's a space, right? So when you go outside of your house now, and then after an hour, you go outside again, things fixed to the ground and, you know, the overall environment, your house, they're going to be continuous, right? You know, it's going to be there always. So that sort of continuity is important for the metaverse. 
So uh, the later four <clears throat> elements are considered as the elements for web one and web two. And the reality tech, uh, you know, virtual augmented reality, mixed reality and extended reality will be for those first three, virtual embodied and emotion, or and when everything is uh, con combined, we can imagine the metaverse. So, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm currently doing a, a research and also advising a thesis uh, for my student uh, who is doing metaverse research. It is difficult for us uh, academicians uh, to create the metaverse. Actually, people can go in and interact and do the research because it, it requires money, time, and a lot of investment and thought process. So, you know, it is important for, uh, you know, anyone who wants to study in the metaverse domain needs to touch on one or at least one or some of these elements uh, incorporated into their study. So their study uh, is not just about virtual reality, but the metaverse. Uh, <clears throat> I, I saw this uh, news just a couple of days ago. Walmart is, go is trying to re revolutionize uh, retail with expensive commercial strategy in the metaverse. So they're gonna create the metaverse, which is exactly similar to the actual real world store. And they try to make the experience in the metaverse, Walmart metaverse store, similar to what people can experience in the real store. So what you buy in the metaverse space is like buying something from uh, Amazon. So you can check out and that can be delivered to your door or it, you can go to actual store to pick them up. And uh, uh, the experiences, product packaging information, all sorts of things can be simulated in this environment. So we can see you know, companies are investing still, you know, to create uh, the metaverse to make the uh, shopping experience or general uh, product experience for their consumers more seamless um, and effective. So the metaverse is about connections simulated in reality. Uh, it can be the connections uh, among things and places and people. Metaverse ecosystem, uh, when I checked a couple of days ago, uh, this is the most recent one. You know, there are a lot of players. Uh, I'm sure you know, uh, some of you will be more interested in NFT, for example. Some of you might be interested in social and meeting side of uh, Metaverse. Some of you might be interested in music. Uh, some of you might be interested in avatar and in identity and interoperability side. So there are areas of research that we can uh, dive into more into more details, right? Uh, for the metaverse study. So uh, I have about like a, uh, I think I can do ten more minutes, uh, and then we are gonna do the uh, ten to fifteen minutes of our Q and A. Uh, some theoretical perspectives uh, is important as well. Uh, you know. Uh, it, one of the things, uh, important things people have uh, difficulty in their mind is when they try to study metaverse for your academic research. Of course, if it is technical research, you can, you, you can do, you know, uh, if, it, if it is in computer science, if it is more, uh, you know, production side, you can do it. But, you know, when it comes to social science research, it is really hard for us to imagine what can be done for uh, metaverse research. and. Uh, Dr. Grace uh, Ahn, uh, who is my colleague at the University of Georgia, she is actually really uh, well known for virtual reality study. And she and I uh, published a paper in the Journal of Advertising last year, uh, you know, to give the theoretical framework of, uh, you know, uh, to study metaverse uh, in the social science domain. So before we jump into that, you know, I want to kind of talk about the communication model that we know. You know, definition of communication is simple. You know, sending and receiving messages. So when we say communication, it is it is about sending and receiving messages, and that there is uh, you know multiple 
variant of uh, communication models. And this is one of the most popular ones. You know, there's information uh, source and uh, there is a sender and receiver and through the channel, there is message uh, going through. Uh, in the in the process, there is noise. So if the noise is too loud, then the communication is not going to happen effectively. When you when it comes to the metaverse, say uh, this is my avatar, by the way, in the decentral land uh, that I created, and uh, <clears throat> uh, I went to went into the decentral land and uh, using this avatar. And I was trying to communicate and I was thinking about myself, you know, okay, why am I here? You know, what, are, what do I need to do? And I was thinking, you know, we are, I'm not, I was not doing any of these communication, right? I mean, I, there was no really particular message that I wanted to send, right? And there is uh, no particular person that I want to send a message to. <clears throat> so to me, the communication field in the metaverse, uh, you know, uh, in the decentralized at the time was like, I was in the field of communication. It's not the chain of communication, but the field of communication. So it's like a more two dimensional or even three dimensional. So there is a communicator, two communicators between them, you know, there is message and feedback going forward and backward, right? And there is, this is communicator A and this is communicator B and they all have their own field of experience and there is shared experience. And I think this is what consistently happen uh, in the metaverse field. When you go in, there will be other people and you're sharing the experience in the space. So you're basically uh, you know, transacting uh, the messages uh, and, the, and the experiences uh, with other people in the space. So, you know, it, it became important, uh, the concept of the emergent interactive agency uh, coined by Bandura. Uh, Bandura's uh, emergent interactive agency is that we are, as human, we are not <clears throat> uh, neither autonomous agents nor simply mechanical conveyors of animating environmental influencers. So we do not simply exchange uh, given messages, but we, are, we actually act, react, act, react. Um, and as we move on, our action, reaction, and messages sending, sent and received will change. So uh, it's a reciprocal causation action, cognitive, objective, and other personal factors. Uh, you know, and uh, uh, we make, constant decisions you know to react and act so when you're in the in the uh, metaverse uh, like this here in the decentral end you know uh, you are actually communicating with your avatar as well so there is you and there's an avatar that you see as yourself in the computer right so there is also communication going on between your avatar and your real self as well so using the transactional communication model, uh, there will be field of experience between the other, and other agent or other avatar and my avatar. But at the same time, I'm also communicating with my avatar and the other person is also communicating with his or her avatar as well. So there are multi layers of communication co-happening in the field of experience in the metaverse. So some theoretical uh, perspectives, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, is that there are there's media related perspective, and personal related perspectives, and engagement uh, uh, through the presence uh, perspectives. So uh, I'm going to throw out uh, multiple theoretical terms uh, for you to digest uh, uh, afterwards. I mean, these are all popular theoretical terms. So if you're interested in it, please uh, you know, go dive in deeper you know, to understand what those are. So affordances are important concept and immersion is also important for the media. So media needs to provide uh, the affordances and immersion. Uh, and also mapping is another important concept. Uh, so, uh, you know, 
we know if even if I close my eyes, I know where my hands are, right? Uh, my hands are farther from me and closer to me. So th there is like a body mapping, you know, going on that I have. So uh, natural mapping, spatial mapping, um, and the contextual mapping are all important concepts to understand uh, for the media side of met the metaverse. And uh, uh, for the personal side, embodied source uh, is uh, you know also important. You know, Proteus effect is like a, you know what you see as avatar for yourself. Uh, will drive you know how you're going to behave in the in the space if you wear a suit and you really nice uh you know clothing then you might want to uh, you will see yourself you know behaving nicely and gently in uh in the metaverse but on the other hand if you if you wear like swimming suit and you know on the beach then you're going to act it differently Presence, co-creation, imagination, interactivity, engagement, communication, effectiveness are all important, uh, you know, per, uh, flow uh, that we need to understand. And somatosensory cues, uh, it's, it's about how we perceive our body. Uh, embodied interactions with message and agents will be also important concept that we need to understand. And sense of being there, uh, and illusion of non-mediation. So if you feel you are in a space, a virtual space or immersive space, uh, you know, so into it, then you're gonna forget of the fact that it is a, a fake environment. You are gonna feel it is real, real environment. So there is an illusion of non-mediation of the environment. So these are really important concepts uh, to know, uh, to understand the metaverse research. And the study that I talked about is this. Uh, it was uh, published last year. The Biford Triadic Relationships Framework, a theoretical primer for advertising research in the metaverse. So this is the, uh, the model that we basically uh, suggested. You know, as you can see, there are K number of metaverses. It's like, you know, K number of internet right? uh, sites. Uh, there are K number of platforms. And within a platform, there are uh, there is a triadic relationship among consumer, engagement, and media. So the consumer initiates, uh, as, as I said here, consumer stands at the apex of triangle because they initiate the triadic relationship. Once initiated, the intensity of the dynamic relationship defines the media affordance generated, and this is expressed through the gradient arrows. So uh, you have uh, yourself and the media environment in the metaverse and you're gonna uh, uh, do the engagement uh, engaging behaviors uh, uh, with it but there are uh, the, the behaviors that you can observe yourself in the metaverse space so there are different uh, you know concepts and theoretical perspectives that i explained uh, briefly are going on in the process and there is also physical world uh, where you also will be uh, present and there will be also physical world media and engagement. And there will be the same sort of like a relationship going on, but there will be, you know, uh, interoperability between the metaverse and the physical world. Uh, you know, uh, uh, it's gonna be here. It's uh, between uh, yourself and yourself in the metaverse and yourself in the real world. So uh, this is public. This is a published paper. So uh, if you ha have interest, you know, feel free to uh, read it. You know, uh, and it's going to provide a lot of depth, uh, you know, in the theoretical perspectives. So uh, moving a little fast, uh, you know. So this is like a co-creation of meaning uh, uh, model uh, that I uh, apply to the metaverse field. And uh, see, there are multiple metaverse platforms, and then in the middle, there's consumer brand for the marketing. And that experience needs to be consistent and integrated. So there is interoperation between the metaverse and the physical world. So, uh, you know, there will be different uh, platforms for the metaverse and people, and if you're, if, if you're Nike, for example, Nike in metaverse uh, A, metaverse B, the experience uh, <clears throat> the character might be different, but the experience itself inherently should be the same. So uh, some research agenda to provide, you know, uh, there are 
multiple research agenda that we, we need to focus on. You know, uh, some of you, uh, once again, you know, are more into NFT. Some of you might be uh, into the conceptualization uh, and methodological framework. Uh, some people among you guys will be data scientists, you know, how the data will be generated from the metaverse and how it can be compared to the real world data to generate better insights. So uh, these, uh, you know, research agenda are also explained in my editorial. So uh, please uh, read if it is uh, interest of you. So where it has to the future. So 20, by 2030, uh, we could be spending more time in the metaverse. That's uh, you know, such a, uh, proposed by KPMG, the, one of the consulting firms. Uh, Pure Research Center says the metaverse will evolve in two directions, virtual metaverse and augmented metaverse. Uh, metaverse is the future of digital connection, embracing a future in the metaverse uh, you know, uh, uh, is another uh, uh, article from Forbes uh, you know, to discuss uh, what the metaverse future is going to look like. And the last thing is the AI's impact. You know, um, the metaverse and AI are a powerful combination. So uh, with AI, you know, things will be more predictable, uh, more customizable. So uh, I think, you know, with Apple's Vision Pro, the metaverse concept uh, through the AI power uh, is going to be uh, much faster, you know, uh, in the near future. So uh, I want to uh, stop it here uh, and uh, I want to see if there is any, if there are any questions, you know, yeah, I'm a little over time, but, you know, I can stay here for more, yeah, about 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you so much for such, such an informative and wonderful talk. So uh, really, uh, I didn't want the movie that you mentioned in the uh, during your talk that uh, real player one. So it'll definitely gonna watch that after this talk. And uh, yes. how <laughs> the metaverse has evolved. So that was quite interesting to see during your presentation, and uh, especially the metrics that you have shown critical uncertainty, uncertain, uncertainty, right? That was wonderful, right? Uh, I have not seen something like that before. Then uh, cloudy vision of companies. Metaverse, yeah. So that is also one of the things that attracted my attention along with the uh, attention economy. So how how advertising and metaverse they will gonna you know uh, economy wise how companies are gonna spend on advertising. And uh, seven core elements uh, were also very interesting. How metaverse and internet they are correlated. So overall, you know, then the research agenda and everything. There was fabulous talk. I really loved it. Uh, right from the beginning. Thank you. So we do not have question from the audience, but uh, probably <laughs> I'll have a couple of questions if you permit. I'll ask. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so how do you think metaverse will gonna evolve? Because uh, uh, just like the social media networks, I mean uh, different kind of TG in different kind of networks, or uh, I mean how it would be uh, from journey from now. If we see the future of metaverse and or metaverses, yeah, I mean that's a really grand question, actually. You know, uh, and uh, we all need to think together, you know, uh, to vision, you know, how it's gonna look like. But I think, you know, as I said, uh, Apple's Vision Pro, uh, which will be launched uh, next year, so people will actually experience, uh, and uh, hopefully, it can. <clears throat> be add, an added uh, experience to what we have imagined as a metaverse experience. So metaverse, uh, you know, in the past, I mean, as of now, you know, uh, as I showed you really uh, the, the, the decentral end, for example, when you go in, you can interact with people, but the interaction itself is pretty limited. You know, um, uh, one limitation is there are not many people, okay? So, you know, there are, there are less and less people, you know, using uh, the metaverse. Uh, the reason is there, you know, the reason is it's not that fun, okay? You, you are interested in that and you created your avatar and went in and you kind of suddenly find yourself, oh, there's kind of nothing I can really do here, you know? Uh, okay, I can move around, I can look around and that's it, you know? So I think the content is going to be the key, you know, for that uh, large grand media platform to flourish. You know, for example, 
YouTube is nice concept. And you know, when did we uh, you know get into the YouTube really uh, for your life? You know, YouTube was created uh, created in two thousand five, bought by Google in two thousand six, and at the time we didn't even know what YouTube really was. And then gradually, but fast, you know, uh, enough, uh, it became the media for us to enjoy. The reason is there are a lot of things to watch, right? A lot of things to watch, and they changed the uh, the platforms like a longer version and shorts, and you know, depending on your time and interest, you know, it really does uh, uh, provide the content that you can uh, enjoy. So I think the metaverse is gonna evolve into something that we that can be enjoyable and also informational. You know, we use we use YouTube for what information purposes. Whenever there are there's something that I need to fix, for example, I fixed my toilet in my home <laughs> two two weeks ago. When I do that, I had to go to the YouTube and kind of see the uh, the video, you know. But sometimes you watch uh, more fun stuff, you know, news, all sorts of things. So I think the metaverse is going to evolve uh, uh, eventually, but you know, it will do that only with the contents. So Professor Yubi Chota has a perspective. I think we, we are also fortunate to have him today. So please, Professor. Uh, you're on mute, sir. Uh, please unmute. <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, Professor uh, Dwedi, sir, you are on mute. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, we can hear now. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Vinod, and thank you so much, uh, Professor Kim, for coming and uh, giving this talk. Can you hear me properly? Yeah, yeah. Very yeah. Good. Yes. yes. Um, as, as we know, uh, the, obviously, it's a conceptual construct. You mentioned very well that uh, we don't know what metaverse is. So it cannot be defined. And that's very, very true. At the same time, I just wanted to know your view. Given the, given the attention has gone away from the metaverse, and particularly from industry, academia is still driving the research in this area. And I wonder what you think if the metaverse will be known as metaverse or something else. Uh, because there is also issue here that because this term, of course, this term was coined much, much earlier, but Meta took this name, uh, like Facebook took name Meta. Now many other big brands, big companies, they're not really very keen of the term Metaverse because in uh, in in other way, if they if they support this, they will be supporting Metaverse uh, Meta. Indirectly. So, what do you think? It will be metaverse, or it will be something else. Uh, one example: Apple. Apple recently um, launched that spatial technology. They didn't use the term a single time metaverse. You know, they, they completely kept themselves away. So, how we see this uh, going forward? That's a great question. Thank you so much. Uh, the I really. I think uh, the metaverse uh, as, as imagined by, actually metaverse, the concept and term was not invented by Mark Zuckerberg or Facebook. So uh, nowadays, it, kind of funny story, a very, very small funny story, but is uh, I, I'm editing a journal, Journal of Interactive Advertising, and certain times some <clears throat> authors use uh, write metaverse with capital M, some uh, people, some authors use uh, metaverse just like as general term, you know, with uh, lower case M. Uh, some, some people say, uh, I mean, write met the metaverse with uh, the is even capitalized, you know, all the time. So there is, there is a, uh, that's sort of like a confusion of the term uh, among the academic, academia as well. And uh, some uh, reviewers say you need to use uh, capitalized T and capitalized M to make sure it is the metaverse created by the meta. And I kind of disagreed it, you know, with it because the metaverse is not really invented by the, the company meta. 
but you know it is it is a coin you know see 2007 there is a metaverse roadmap group you know who suggested the concept and you know uh the innovation of the metaverse um way before uh facebook uh got interested in the metaverse so to me the term uh you know is gonna stay uh, and the metaverse, however, how we define it and how it's gonna look like will be different from now on, from now. So like, you know, internet in, 20, internet in 1996 or 2000, you know, when Google was actually uh, created and internet nowadays, 2023 is so different. You know, the basic concept stays the same right network of information you know uh digital information digitally uh, present but you know how it's going to be accessed and how we are gonna, how we use them are so different so i think the metaverse uh, concept nowadays uh, is going to change um uh, in reality in the future and you know the, in, in marketing you know there's like a xerox for example xerox created a copy machine and people use xerox to say copy all right, hey, Xerox it. You know? So I think you know, uh, with that, even uh, the metaverse concept is not really owned by one company. I get, however, the Apple didn't want to use intentionally the metaverse and they replaced the world with spatial computing. And the spatial computing is to me <clears throat> a really driving force to make the metaverse even uh, better special computing and metaverse i think metaverse is uh, say like you know internet is internet to metaverse is uh, uh, digital or computer technology to oh no no, no network computing uh to the internet so like a, there's internet concept and metaverse concept for the internet, it is driven by the uh, digital uh, network technology. And for the metaverse, I think it can be also driven by the spatial computing technology. It is not only the spatial te uh, computing technology, but also there will be more. But you know, I think the you know, spatial computing will be important uh, technology to drive the metaverse, but I don't think it's gonna replace the term metaverse uh, moving forward. I Thank hope you. that answers. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Stephen, I, I think you mentioned that you have tight timeline, so we would not delay you too long. But, you know, over to yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably I'll also keep my question posted to you on email. So, in interest of time. So, let's, if you have the, with your kind permission, can we conclude the session, please? Uh, so, uh, thank you for taking our questions and uh, we would like to extend our sincere gratitude uh, to Professor Kim for gracing the event uh, with his valuable insight and during its enlightening session. So I want to express my heartfelt thanks also to Professor Yogesh Kumar Devedi, Dr. Laurie Hughes and Professor Ramakrishnan Raman for conceiving the idea of the seminar series and providing us this exceptional platform to delve into contemporary theme of emerging perspective on the metaverse. A special thank to our esteemed guests who have joined us from various parts of the world contributing to the enriching discussions today. Lastly, I would like to express uh, my appreciation to Mr. Rajesh and his team for unveiling IT support in showing the smooth functioning of the event. So uh, before we leave, uh, it's time to announce the next event and next seminar. So registration link is already posted in the chat. Those interested who can do registration right away. So as we conclude our gathering, I'm delighted to inform you that uh, the upcoming seminar is just a month away and uh, scheduled on October 18th, 2023. We are honored to have Dr. Ariana Poliview and from University of Nicosia, Cyprus and uh, Elias O. Papas from University of Eder, Norway, who will share their thoughts on the topic, Chasing Metaverses, reflecting on existing literature to understand the business value of metaverses so kindly make a note of this date to your calendars thank you all for your participation today we'll eagerly anticipate your presence in the next seminar wish you all a wonderful time ahead